in today's tough topic, we're going to look at uh, immigrants and refugees. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised that this is even a thing among Christians. Um, it's kind of surprising to me because of all that the Bible talks about with, um, you know, loving your neighbor and with, you know, loving people and everything. It's just kind of, I'm kind of surprised that, that Christians, you know, can be so hateful about some things. Now, I, I don't really care what your view is on whether the borders should be open or closed or whatever. That's really, to me, it's kind of a non-issue when we're talking about how Christians should feel about refugees and immigrants. Um, a lot of people, for instance, will say government, the, the government's job is to secure the nation and, you know, these, these refugees and everything, they, they could destroy the nation. Okay, all right, I, I kind of hear what you're saying, um, but to date, refugees really haven't been a major source of terrorism and America was founded by immigrants and uh, refugees and that kind of stuff. I, 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 like I say, I, I put Christianity and then American. So whatever decision I choose is always based on what I should do as a Christian more so than what America should do. America is kind of like its own thing, you know, and Christians should be their own thing. You know, it, I feel like a lot of times Christians use the government as a crutch. How can I possibly not love people? How can I possibly not reach out to people who need help? Ah, let's always choose my government first. Now, this sounds like a really great thing. I, I'm a patriot, but remember that the government is passing away. The nation of America will not exist for forever. I mean, all things end. Every nation in the history of the world has, has ended. I mean, it, it's something that happens. Uh, choosing something so temporary in light of the great commission that God gave his people just seems kind of petty. So with that being said, I, I really don't care what your what your position is on whether America should have open or closed borders. I don't care what your argument is either. It really just doesn't matter. That's not really what we're talking about. What can you do? Not what can my government do? What can you do? In the case of refugees, Oh, our government should or shouldn't do such and such to help the Syrian refugees or the people in Yemen or whatever. That's good and well. I'm glad that you're trying to or want people to help or whatever, or at least I hope that you do. Uh, but the more important question is what can you do about it? There are people in need, and God told us to go. There shouldn't be this big of a discussion about it. Christians shouldn't be so hell-bent on you know, preserving a temporary nation as on expanding God's kingdom. Because when we get to heaven, do you really think that God's going to say, you did a good job giving your heart and soul to a nation that only lasted for a few hundred years? Of course not. He's not going to care. He's going to care how well we obeyed, how well we loved. I think that a lot of this just comes from not having good priorities. So help those you can. You know, oh, well, I can't help, I can't help everyone. Okay, so don't help everyone. Help those you can. Well, I don't have a lot of money. Well, what do you have? What do you have? Where can you help? How can you help? Start there. And, uh, you know, maybe God will open doors. Maybe you can do volunteer work somewhere. And it, you don't only have to go to refugees and immigrants. You can go to any needy. Look around and see where can, where can I go? What can I do? And then do that. Um, obviously, you can't reach everyone in the world, but you can reach someone, and that's a good place to start. Um, oftentimes with this, people will say, no, I don't believe in helping the Syrian refugees because, you know, what about American veterans? Americans first. Okay, all right, whatever. You know, I, I'm not here to debate that. I, I That's beyond the scope of this, but I will say this. If you're going to say Americans first, then actually help the Americans. See, what I see a lot of Christians do is I, say, I hear them say, oh, we should take care of Americans first, and then they don't care of, take care of anyone. It's not right for us to help the Syrian refugees because there's American veterans. What are you doing to help the veterans then? You know, I, I, I really don't care. I'm not about borders. I'm not about skin color. I'm about doing what God told us to do, and God told us to love people. He told us to help the hurting. He told us to be there for the people who don't have a voice for themselves. And so when we sit back and say, okay, this is my idea of who is a good person. This is my idea of who is not worth saving. Can we honestly say that we have the heart of God in such a terrible, terrible decision? I don't believe so. 
but I will say this, um, many, many people have been saved um, through Christians caring enough to go. But I tell you this, nobody has ever been saved by a Christian who's too selfish to go. Never has that happened. Not everyone is called to be a missionary. Not everyone is called to do volunteer work. But do what you can, where you can. That's the main point of all of this. It doesn't matter if we're talking about refugees or immigrants or American veterans. Or I don't care. Help people. Love people. Um, but uh, a lot of uh, a lot of Muslims that are coming over from the Middle East are getting saved because Christians of Christians who, who take their time to go and serve them. So remember that. Building God's kingdom or fighting for your own vanity over your own piece of land. Really put things in perspective there. Um, and don't forget that all this is passing away anyways. You know, and Like Jesus said, not one stone is going to be left. Not, not one nation is going to be left before this thing is all over. They're all going to be done away with. So don't worry too much about preserving your nation. Um, the sign of faith really all throughout the Bible is love. By this they will know that you, know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love, I mean, the whole thing. He said the whole command, the whole law, everything could be summarized in two statements. Love God and love people. That's a big thing to say because there were a lot of laws. If I remember correctly, there were 613, I believe, laws of Moses. As compared to the two summarizations of all those laws, love God and love people. Wow, that's a big difference in what you hear a lot of people harping on. Um, and I would go a step further. I would then say that to not love must therefore be to not have faith. Because if we have faith to God, we will love our neighbor. James said this, I, you know, you're saying, oh, well, I have faith in you of works. I will show you my faith by my works. For what good is it if I see someone in, in need and I turn a blind eye and I say, oh, God be with you? What good is that? It's good to pray. It's better to pray and do what you can. That's good. In the story of the Good Samaritan, Jesus told about um, a, a person who was in need and uh, the the real powerful people, that, that, that their whole point was loving God. They, they should have been there for that person. They kept walking by a priest and a Levite. He just kept walking by. But then there was a, was a Samaritan who Jews hated because they had this long-standing problem. It's not not important for this discussion. Moral of the story being Jews hated Samaritans. That's moral of the story. And it was a Samaritan man who helped them. And they said, who do you think was the neighbor out of all of those people? And the Jew says, it was, well, he doesn't say the Samaritan. He can't bring himself to say that. He says, it was the one who helped him, you know, because he, he hated, obviously he had a problem with the Samaritan. <laughs> but uh, more of the story being that that was the person who was a neighbor. That was the person who loved their neighbor. And uh, so, hey, should I help the Syrian refugees? Not should I, it's how can I? It's not who should I, but who can I? That's really the heart of all of this. Um, so just keep those things in mind. And uh, well, until next time.